Davis Show. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Caleb Davis Show. I am your host, Caleb Davis, on this fine, politically driven evening. Mm. With me, as always, my right hand man who is on my left, Brother J Mo. That's right, what's up? How goes it today? Everything's well. Goes yeah. well today. You tired of politics yet? I've been tired of politics for the past, I don't know, 20 years? <laughs> as long as I've been aware. You're tired of politics my entire adult life. That's correct. Right. Correct. Well, we've got a special episode for you. As you know, tomorrow is election day. Mm. And in honor of election day, we decided to, uh, to put together a little show highlighting some of the major uh, peak moments in all of rock and roll music history as it relates to political anthems and antagonistic yeah. rage and all that good stuff. To do this, we had to bring in a ringer. Because it's not enough just for Jay and I to vent um, who our stick-it-to-the-man favorites are. That's so right. we thought maybe we'd bring in, I don't know, Da -da! Mr. Brandon Vibrock, welcome to the hey! show, sir. Absolutely. Welcome, sir. Hey, to Brandon. You guys. Brandon will be joining us via Skype today. And, Zoom. Uh, Zoom, whatever it's called. Yeah. FaceTime. <laughs> Technology. The interweb. The World Wide Web. How you doing, BV? I'm great. How are you guys? You know, on, on, on the introduction for Justin there, you guys really had a lot of the political base covered, being that he was your right-hand man on your left side. Oh, that is good. You know, like, I, I don't know if you were there, if that was written for that intent, but ops, I mean, <laughs> come on. Well, I'm, I'm reminded of the great uh, politician by Cream, right? I support the right, but I'm leaning to the left. <laughs> Yes, or was it yes, the other way around? I, I don't I know. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. So, so this, Justin, give the viewer a little quick um, layout of what's happening here. So here's the deal. As Caleb uh, very appropriately introduced this topic, we're doing this uh, in a timely way, being that we're right here at election time. One of the things that's motivated a lot of music in the history of uh, popular music, rock and roll, folk music, uh, really, if you if you went and got in the weeds about it and just followed the trail of music through history, you've got Depression era music, you've got Civil War music, you've got politics and the political spectrum and government overreach and government neglect and social tension has been the fodder for the canon of music for a long, long time. So uh, rock and roll is just a little bit more exciting and a little cooler uh, when they do it. But but you made a good point. Blues is no exception to that. Mm, absolutely. Blues was right in on it, especially in the 20s and 30s. Absolutely. Yeah. That's political stuff. So what we're here to do is just to think about it a little bit. Not from any kind of an expert perspective, but just for our taste and the music that we like and what we've enjoyed listening to, just the stuff that's politically driven, that's awesome. Yep. You know, so we're just gonna talk about it a little bit. We're gonna get Brandon's take on it. We're gonna hear everybody's kind of favorites in that sense. Yep, and I think a good thing to point out, um, don't confuse, because we live in an era when everyone is so loud mm. and everyone is so convinced of their own righteousness in their opinions on things. We're not talking about political people, okay? We're talking about music that is politically driven. Mm -hmm. So this is not people who waste the ticket payers' money by standing up on the microphone at concerts and going on rants. That's not what I'm talking about. That, that's flat annoying. Okay, we're talking about people who make music that is driven by the angst of the man content so it's the yeah. music so this isn't like the dixie chicks you know i mean i think that they had a famous moment that was political but they are certainly not creating politically aware music. they need wide open spaces yeah their uh, moment may have ended their careers maybe just for a short period of time no i i think uh, it did in their careers yeah. i think yeah, yeah. i think yeah. i think you have to know when you're in the country world b and you decide that you want to take a far left stand on something, and yeah. uh, you're you're just call a spade right. a spade, you know. Right. 
And you know what? And for that, and for that, I tip my hat to those Dixie chicks. You know what? Who cares? If you yeah. if you know that your constituency is not gonna like what you're throwing out there, and you do it anyways because you believe in something, who cares how dumb the Dixie chicks are? That's a cool move. <laughs> You know? I think they may be back now. I think they, they may have surfaced again. Yeah, I think that's probably an overreach, but okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. This is not going to take an official format. We're not going to yeah. do a top five. We're just going to start. I've got mine broken down, and I want to just say this. I've got like some political bands some political songs because not all the songs are by political bands. All right, So mm. it was possible to have a band out there who wrote a really dope politically driven song but maybe they're not defined by that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they may have other avenues that define the band. And then um, albums. Yeah. Political albums. Political so albums. we can just kind of, I mean, we can start it however we want to. You want to just kind of get the, the, the obvious out there in the open first? Uh, I mean, I'll just my the obvious one to me is Rage Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine, Brandon. What do you say? For sure, you know, especially in our in our you know generationally, you know, and the most memorable mm -hmm. of of being so you know anti-establishment and and against the man and and you know let's make things right. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't think that Rage Against the Machine um, ever stated what they do believe in. I just think yeah. that they stated that they don't believe in anything that we believe that, that, that the general oh, yeah. public believe in. I think it's yeah. it may even take on a sense of anarchy. Uh, I'm not really sure. I don't know. Yeah. I can't. I mean, I know that they were anti-establishment, like B said. But they, I can't. they were very vocal about the Democrats and the Republicans being tools of the devil, essentially. <laughs> but they, yeah, they, they, I, they even, you know, they fell back to deeper roots of of you know, of raping the land of, of who actually deserves the mm -hmm. title of which, you know? So, you know, they, they kind of really pulled back and yeah, they're, they're, they're saying across the board, everybody got it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I will say one thing that is besides just having the, the best riffs of all the, <laughs> of all the political people, of all anyone, of all anyone, <laughs> much less this category. They, I, th I don't know, y'all let me know what you think. I think a lot of these political people we're going to talk about just wanted to kind of express themselves. I think Rage kind of it, it wanted to and attempted to actually change stuff. No, yeah. They I were trying to actually do it, not just like express themselves. That's valid. It was them. It was, they, they couldn't deny it. It was... It was what made their music. There wasn't, it was, you know, the, the music wasn't even a byproduct of, it was their belief. It yep. was their chant. It was their religion. Mm -hmm. it, there, know, was, there was there was nothing um, about them that, that I think wanted to make it as a band. I think, you know, normally people try to make it as musicians and like, right. this is our art, this is what we do. They were political activists that said, maybe we can get a larger microphone if our band yeah. is big. If we start a band, and Zach, I don't think Zach did anything, mm -mm. and he was like, "Okay, I'll learn to rap a little bit, and I'll write some dope poetry, and then we'll put it to motion." And yeah, there's not one song in the Rage Against the Machine canon, folks, not one about a woman or about love, love, right. or it, it, there's nothing. Every single song. So, yeah. it, in, in the sense of some of the other bands we're gonna name that are massively politically driven. In that sense, I would say that Rage Against the Machine takes the number one. Absolutely. And it's just so pervasive. Like I said, everything that Rage Against the Machine does is politically driven. And also, there is nothing that Rage does, not one song, you can go through all the songs, that does not groove. <laughs> now, that's a fact. Not that that's the point of today. No, but but, but but we might as well toot their horn while we're at it. It yeah. all grooves. They drove it home correctly. Ah, correctly. And, and, and I know for a fact my man B here is a Brad Wilk fan. Oh mm. my God, I love that man. Yes. <laughs> you got to yes. love that That Timmy C and Brad Wilk. Uh, we've had this discussion uh, before and maybe we should uh, do this another night. But we, we've said like, who is the baddest rhythm section mm. in rock and roll? In, in rock. So, you know, and it was like, would you take wow, Flea? Would you take Flea and Chad? Or would you take Timmy yeah. C and Brad Wilk? And uh, that's another day. That's another day. That's a good sure. one. That's a good topic. Yeah. yeah. 
So notable, notable listens there. Obviously, go ahead and, and Renegades of Funk is incredible, but Renegades of Funk is also a cover album. Right. And so it's not necessarily like Rage. It's them covering some pretty heavy songs um, in this political genre. But the first album, Rage Against the Machine, self-titled, uh, Evil Empire, yeah. and The Battle of Los Angeles, Just those are three kind of staple listens if mm -hmm. you want to hear some anti-government Angry, angry music. Freedom. Yeah, freedom. Oh, yeah. gosh, freedom. Great yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. Township freedom. Rebellion. I mean, yeah, yeah it, it goes. So let, let's, uh, let, we give them the top middle. Yeah. And I think a good, a good safe number two, and, and again, I don't know why we have the tendency to rank things, and we don't, this is not a ranking. B, I'm going to go with uh, Dylan next. Okay. I, and I think that may be kind of an obvious choice, but. Yeah, but Dylan. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm more, you know. Yes, for sure, it's very obvious. Um, it, I mean, he hasn't, he's never moved me as much as I think he's moved you guys. But for sure, I mean, the, 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 um, I mean, the poet that he was and where he was in that place and time, and mm. the, you know, uh, it was, it was, he was, he was the perfect uh, pulpit man. I mean, to, you know, to sing these songs and. And write these lyrics. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, go ahead. But you know, yeah. Uh, how can, how can you change? I mean, the times they are changing. I mean, right. Oh, yeah. Right. And that album in particular. That album in particular yeah. is great. Bob Dylan was. It was his desire to be with um, kind of the lower socioeconomic people. He he when he was first getting his start was touring a lot of folk festivals where you you've got like people who are farmers, agricultural folks, mm -hmm. uh, he was very interested and driven by civil rights in the black community. And he was involved with that at a time where, you know, your typical Robert Zimmerman would not have been so concerned with, you know, the other side of the track, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That was all from the outset. That was kind of his deal. Um, I think he was the first one to really call names, too. Oh, yeah. He like, calls names. He, he wasn't... This man didn't um, try to make an artistic statement. It was a... He was a true a, a true protest writer. Mm -hmm. Like, he protested, like, the real injustices of the world and called them by name. Absolutely. Yeah. And he was cool enough to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he does it. And if you, if you want um, some of the... Some of the best listens. Obviously, we, we mentioned the times they are changing. Mm -hmm. You can go listen to his take on American history in um, with God on our side. Yep. And that's that's one of the most impactful. If you want to hear somebody who really calls a spade a spade and says, um, you know, the Second World War, uh, we'll have to look up the lyrics for that one. But oh yeah, you know, when he says the Second World War. Came or the first world war came and it went. And the reason for fighting I never did get. Mm -hmm. The bodies they you know they count it, but you don't count the dead when God's on your side. You know, and it's like who cares what happened? God's mm -hmm. on our side. We did it the right way. And Absolutely. When he says uh, the second world war, though though six million Jews in the ovens they fried, the Germans were forgiven and now they have God on their side. Talking about yeah. how we just overlook these. Uh, you know these these atrocities. atrocities in history, and because it's all for political gain and stuff, it's, it was amazing. And his his uh, as a poet, his ability to turn a phrase <laughs> is incredible. Uh, also, because he was not so so, he's very different than Rage in the sense that this did not. It was a, a big part of his catalog, especially early on. But he wrote plenty of love songs. He wrote I mean, yeah, yeah. visions of Johanna. He wrote all kind of other stuff. But I mean, you got "Blowing in the Wind" is an incredible political song. Maggie's Farm. Maggie's, Maggie's Farm. Farm's on the Rage cover album. It is on the it's so Renegades, Renegades of Funk. Funk. Um, so they even nod to Dylan yep. as a political uh, kind of spokesperson for musicians and everything. But yeah, Bob Dylan for me personally is one of my favorites. Absolutely. Absolutely. B, what do you got, man? Give us uh, give us another good one. Uh, um, you know, I'm gonna pull out Megadeth. Oh, Megadeth. I mean, you know, it's uh, Countdown to Extinction was just an album that I remember. Is that Peace Cells? Peace Cells, yeah. Symphony of Destruction. You know, it was, it was, you know, again, and you know, it's funny with all these guys, Dave Mustaine, Bob Dylan, Zach Delarosha, like, you know, you're talking about brilliant 
minds in the first place, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and these guys, they, they, they could back everything up that they were talking about also. And, and, and they were driven to that. They were driven to the lyrics. They were driven to the music and they were, they were driven to do these things. But that was, that was just, uh, you know, in my lifetime and I guess my trajectory, I just remember, you know, especially peace cells, you know, and, and, and God, it was such a popular hit also, especially to be, a heavy metal hit like that mm-hmm. um, for that time. It, it was, it, it, it was kind of a woke song. It was like, Whoa, you know, let, let's, let's, let's know these lyrics. Yeah. And the same thing with Symphony of Destruction. Um, so yeah. So on that heavy metal side of things, you know, I think, I think Megadeth definitely, um, that's good. You know, push the line in the sand. That's a good take because that's something neither one of us would have brought. We up. wouldn't. We would not. This have is gone why we that. have guests on. Folks. Absolutely. That's a I good. I never would have no, not acknowledged Megadeth. That's a good take. That's yeah. a good take. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, obviously, you know Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and yeah, I've got that. Yes. M- maybe even just Neil Young. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, tremendous. Yeah. That's kind of one of those um, Southern Cross. Yeah. Southern Cross. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's so much stuff. Southern Man, the Neil Young tune. Yeah. That's Alabama is a Neil Young song. Yeah. Um, Teach off, your children, right? Yeah, Teach your children is is a good is a good tune. Alabama, in particular, just while we're on Neil Young, the Harvest album is just a great album. But the song Alabama on that album is is really really good yeah um politically driven socially aware new, yeah that's good new stuff. young tune Here, here's a band that um we have found a way to discuss almost every single episode and i think it's because they're one of the greatest bands that have ever i think existed. it's because the namesake has an agenda and just wants to promote this band <laughs> the, <all> the, <laughs> the doors the Doors. Yeah. I mean, oh, wow. The Doors are like an incredibly. So I had a quote that I read when we uh, reviewed the Doors album, yeah. and I'll paraphrase it, but it was Robbie Krieger. You'll get a kick out of this, Brandon. So the Doors were in a time, folks. They came out in '67, and that was the Summer of Love. And in the Summer of Love, the Doors had the number one hit that summer, which was Light My Fire. So you have to keep in context that this is the ultimate in hippie counterculture, you know, whatever, yeah, whatever that garbage was, you know, that, it, that, or flower I should, should say garbage, flower power, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it slowly, quickly dwindled out, but in yeah. the midst of that, the Doors were the number one band, here's what's interesting, Robbie Krieger had a quote saying, we were, we came out during the flower power and all that, he said, but we never bought into that, and he said, we always knew that there was a darker side to life than what everybody was projecting, he said, we knew the Vietnam War was going on. And he said, the Doors wanted to inform you that there was another side to all that. Yeah. And he said, that was our mission. Oh, so, wow. so the all Doors right. the doors were not all about this. The Doors were saying, the world, th- this is not real. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you, you're pretending. You're living in a bubble that says, oh, we have peace and love. And he said, no, people are, are being slaughtered. You yeah. know, over uh, our, our Americans are over there and they don't know what's happening. They don't know who they're fighting for or what's going on. Mm. And um, so oh, they and also, I mean, gosh, you know, amongst other things, the real torment of Jim Morrison, I mean, that guy was tortured, yeah. you know, from reality. He, he had to escape at all costs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, from, you know, societal pressures and whatnot. Notable, notable takes from the Doors, the Unknown Soldier, mm-hmm. and Peace Frog. Peace Frog, yeah, yeah, and and you know those are <laughs> yeah. those are great, great, great tunes. Peace Frog is good. I always forget about Peace Frog. Yeah, as yeah. a Doors tune. Don't sleep on Peace Frog. So another thing, and you guys, you guys can speak to this, but I, I when I was trying to get some some notes together and think about these things, there were a couple things that I struggled with. One was, is there a difference between social artists and political artists mm-hmm. you know so like let me let me explain this i think about social artists i think curtis mayfield you know mm-hmm. i think even even to some extent a much lesser than curtis mayfield but james brown to some extent yeah. you know say it loud i'm black and i'm proud like those kind of things what about marvin gay yeah you know with like what's going on like that's a really 
a, a pretty strongly driven social album. Oh yeah. And I'm thinking uh, Stevie Wonder even with like Living for the City. Um, yeah. I don't know that those are political lyrics. I think that it's social commentary. So that makes me think, and I'll just drop a kind of lesser known uh, contemporary artist, um, Tyler Childers. He's a uh, like a, an alt country kind of a guy. But he is very socially aware of music, and it has to do with uh, kind of the Eastern Kentucky poverty methamphetamine culture that's just wrecking that area of the country. And he wow. writes these songs that are informed by this place that he kind of grew up and what he's been exposed to and kind of to bring attention to it. And it just, even, even less pointedly than that, mm. it just flavors all of this stuff. So I think a lot of those artists similar in a similar way, it's not even so much pointed as it's just this awareness. And I think like uh, consciousness, like in hip hop and rap, I think that's been kind of a movement, like this conscious mu movement, or like Kendrick Lamar and folks like that. It just, I mean, some of that stuff gets really pointed, but a lot of it, it's just flavoring. Um, yeah. I you know agree. what I'm saying? Yeah. I think yeah, it's like it's it's ancillary to to the the main point. It's like it, you know, there's there's this like uprising kind of around it, kind of toes the line a little bit, and you know, and, and not necessarily follows the wave, but they you know they, they they aren't necessarily known for this this you know this stand this push, mm -hmm. um, you know, may, maybe more known for you know the melodic things that they do. Um, sure. you know, versus some of these other people we were talking about. And, and, you know, just to maybe stay in that route, like on the other side of that to me is Public Enemy, you know, like, you know, Public Enemy is a band that definitely was led. It was a social movement, mm -hmm. but, but these guys were as political as it gets and, and they were heard and they were different and they were groovy and they were, you know, they were, they were, they were punching the right buttons. They were saying the right things and they were fantastic, you know? So, yeah, you know, that, that's, that's a big, that's a top five in my, you know, in, in my world, they're, they're definitely up there. And Brandon, I would say that to your point, public enemy. So a lot of people would look at NWA and say that should be in there. But yes. I think, but to see, I think NWA was more just kind of, um, they, they, totally, they touched it. They, they 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 dabbled in it, but I think it was more just like I'm angry. It's and an I'm, attitude. Yeah, it's just an attitude kind of. <laughs> um, I mean, like I mean, like attitude as opposed to like we're talking about rage, wanting to get something accomplished. Yeah, like it's like I think there's a difference in an attitude and an agenda. It was just I'm a bad boy. I want to I want to talk like a bad boy. Yeah, but I think right. Public Enemy was a little more legit than NWA totally. in that. I mean, it takes a nation of millions. I think is one of the. You know, I mean, that, that's a completely socially, politically motivated album mm -hmm. that, you know, that moved a uh, generation. Yeah. For sure. So I'll tell you one that uh, that I love is Bob Marley oh. in terms of wow. like activism yeah. and trying to get something accomplished. Wow. There's a there's a huge one. I he, mean, he's a huge. he's a. He's a juggernaut. He's a, he is as up there as any of them in terms of, I would even say, the success of his agenda. Because I think that there, I can't remember the, 100%. the details of it, but there was, he did a lot to bring Jamaica together and what all it was going through. Uh, in so much of his catalog, maybe not as exclusively as Rage, but so much of it is. So much. I mean, Trench Town Rock, Redemption Song, War, uh, War, Concrete uh, Jungle, Get Up, Stand Up, Iron Lion Zion. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, Get Up, Stand Up. Oh, Stand Up for Your Rights. Stand rise. Up for Your Rights. The whole thing is birthed out of slums and slum life. You know, Trench Town Rock, Rock, Give the Slums a Try. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like the whole thing is. That leaves so much benefit in his wake to this day. Mm hmm. From oh, yeah. all of that. I mean, much less the music, but from everything he's done and and um and and the foundations that he's left behind to continually support exactly what you're saying, Justin. I uh, I I shame on me. I didn't have him there. He's in the five. I'm taking somebody out right now. Oh yeah. I'm going unbelievable. I'm going war. War. With, okay. With, not not the band war. The song the war. The song war. As the top. I know that there's probably other songs, mm -hmm. but. 
wow. you know, I said earlier that that Dylan wasn't afraid to name names. Neither was, neither was. Neither oh, was, neither was Bob. Yeah, no. Marley. Marley wasn't afraid to name names either. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but he until well, the unhappy regimes that hold our brothers in Angola, South Africa. <laughs> You know, he starts naming like these people, yeah. <laughs> subhuman bond. I mean, it's insane. Like those it lyrics. Is. Listen to the lyrics to War. War is good, but he. I, when I think of Marley, I just think more successful. Like he. Yep. Yeah. He like accomplished some stuff. That's all. You, yeah. I mean, you think about. That's all you think about with him is unity. Oh yeah. Peace, love and and uh, wow. Yeah. And see, I, I heard and not to go backtrack here, but to to your point. Like, I heard that Rage Against the Machine one time, I was listening to an interview with Tom Morello, and he said that, that Rage's record for touring mm-hmm. was actually, like, incredibly low. Like, in their decade-long uh, history, they had only played, like, 350-something shows. And yeah. he said, you know, that's pathetic as a band, but it was because Zach was always off doing something. Like, he was off doing a sit-in or doing a march or doing yeah. a, you know, he was always off doing something. Yeah. That had nothing to do with music because he had now a platform. Yeah. And this is like, you know, this is a little different than, like I said, some some woke famous person who's right. like, you know, now that I'm famous, well, let me do it. No, Zach said, I want to be famous yeah. so that I can so that I can talk like this. And it's a little different. And what about what about some songs? We got some key songs. I mean, yeah. yeah, I think we're, you know, some of the ones that we're rattling off are uh, are particularly good, but... Um, Fortunate Son? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that, for- that's, that's here. I mean, we said Ohio, you know, fight the power and 911 is a joke as far as, you know, back to uh, public enemy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Killing in the name. Killing in the Born, name. Uh, yeah, freedom. What about Born in the USA? Let's, mm. So Born in the USA, folks. You haven't lived until you've seen a politician play Born in the USA as their anthem as they're coming out to do a meet and greet or something like that. Because here's the thing. Born in the USA is like a total anti-Vietnam War, like probably anti-American yeah. anthem, you know? It's it's almost like sarcasm. Born in the USA. It's like very similar to the to the vibe of with God on our side. Yeah, oh yeah. It's, it's like a shtick. It's like Born in the USA, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, that's like, how it's... I went down to see my VA man, but he said, son, you don't understand, you know, born in the USA, <laughs> nothing I can do for you. <laughs> you know? yeah. I had a brother in Viet Cong, you know, they're they're all still here, but he's still gone. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like his brother died in Vietnam. He's like, but he's born in the USA. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> Th- those lyrics, actually, you know, those lyrics are pretty sharp. Yeah, it's clever. Definitely clever. Tax Man by the Beatles. Oh, let's get on that IRS kit here. So here's the thing. Here's a cool thing. I'm gonna butcher it, but John Lennon, uh, the Revolution. The, no, the oh. the comment he made back in the day on the concert. You all, you people up front, clap your hands. You guys in the fancy seat, just rattle your jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so it's something like that. But he said, you know, rattle your jewelry is yeah. kind of a Cockney deal. But yeah, they they've always kind of had, and that again, a group born out of poverty, kind of. Yeah, they were roughnecks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you how it will be. There's one for you and 19 for me, cause I'm the tax man. Oh yeah. Don't ask me what I want it for unless you want to pay some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should five percent should five percent appear too small? Just be thankful I don't take it all, <laughs> cause I'm the tax man. Yeah. And, and amen. I mean, <laughs> amen. That's right. <laughs> here, here. Yeah. Hey, please, listen. Be, please be easy on me. You That's know? right. Yeah. So I, I, I did. I, I broke down um, maybe three areas of politically driven uh, themes of songs or, or, or concepts, and I, I, I artistic personification. Mm. So. And what brought this to my attention was animals, Pink Floyd animals. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. this is where you have socioeconomic status types that are built into. It's basically an Orwellian animal kind of farm, animal farm type of thing. Yeah, where you have the sheep are a certain type, the pigs are a certain, the dogs are a certain, yeah. and, 
And so that's a cool thing because, so that's a little more obscure. Yeah, so, but it's just not as, it's not as cut and dry as, you know, somebody who would be just as blatant and name names. It's a little more, you gotta weed, you know, kind of weave between mm -hmm. the lines there and figure out what's going on. But that was like personification, something oh, that's sure. a little more out there. And here's one of my favorites. Obviously, we talked about protest was one of mine, where it's just straight protest anthems. Um, and this is one of my favorites because it's one of the hardest to achieve. But I call it oral illustration. Mmm. Oral. Oral illustration. Let me give oral. you an example of oral illustration. Machine Gun by Jimi Hendrix. Forget about the lyrics, although the lyrics are very addressing, you know, they're very straight ahead to a specific yeah. thing. Pick up my axe and fight like a farmer. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. But take that away, you still paint the picture yeah. of the Vietnam War in his guitar solos. So when he starts doing it, you, you hear it. You're like, oh no. And, and, and Jimmy actually also recreated war in his Star Spangled Banner mm -hmm. at Woodstock. Um, if you listen to the Woodstock recording, that's a very clear interpretation of I'm drawing you a picture mentally. You're going to hear these sounds come out, but I'm drawing you a picture of what it is overseas. And, you know, Jimmy was actually in the 101st Airborne. Yeah. Um, so he knew a thing or two about, I don't know if he ever saw combat. I don't think he did, but he knew a thing or two about what was going on. Sure. Um, and another example of that is the song Alabama by John Coltrane. There are no lyrics to that song, but you you understand um, the theme of it is the the KKK bombings of that church that killed the little girls back in fifty six, I think, yeah. or fifty eight, something like that. And he wrote this song or this piece of music, and when you listen to it, it's like, no, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And it's a, it's a beautiful yeah. thing, but it's heavy, mm -hmm. you know. But, but I, I thought that was a really cool thing where every now and then someone paints you the picture of war oh, sure. or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, back to the, the first one, um, your artistic... Personification. Uh, what is it? Personification. Yes. So, in, in this one, you know, maybe, you know, a little outside the bubble, but you too... Mm. You know, in, in their that. early days, man, you know, the album War. Oh, like, yeah. They're, they're, Sunday Bloody Sunday is an anthem. That's a great, good call, B. I great mean, word. Right? Like, you know, just from the... Da, 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 every, every part of that song is anthem of Let's March. Oh, it really Let's, is. Truly, throughout, and in the name of love also. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Unforgettable Fire, I think, was right after War. And in the name of love is is our you know our 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 sixties shortcomings and you know and the death of Martin Luther King Jr. and 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 they you know but but the way they paint the picture they don't you know they they paint it and they mm -hmm. let you know they leave it for interpretation. That's and, what's great. Oh, for sure. That's the artistic I, side of the of the of the mm -hmm. element there. That's great. Absolutely beautifully done. But you know, and there is a band too. Like I guess in my opinion that. They started politically. They didn't start as a pop band whatsoever. Oh, yeah. And and then they moved into becoming a pop band. Um, you know, and they were all in incredibly talented. They could do whatever they wanted to do at that point. But, you know, they they you know, I mean those those early albums, you two, and, and, and definitely their artistic expression in what they were trying to do and, and, and how they did personify that, mm -hmm. I mean, I think they nailed it. Yeah, and Sunday Bloody Sunday, I think maybe one of the top songs do as far as politically charged and and emotional, yeah, emotionally politically charged that you can't not feel the their expression. Absolutely, that's good. Yeah, U two is a great call for and, a political band. Yeah, another another really big stick it to the man album. Not maybe not all the way through, but several. Uh, brilliant points of it was Paranoid, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That and, is a good call. And that's not a band that you would typically look at and be like, well, there's a there's an anti-government you know, government mm -hmm. band. But Black Sabbath was... They, they didn't take a backseat to anybody when they... Hand did, of Doom. Hand of Doom, yeah, yeah, absolutely. War Pigs, Hand of Doom, you know. Oh, yeah. 
That, that, that was a great one. Yeah. I mean, that's a great... That really is a good it's call. A, it's a classic album anyways, but that's a heavy mm -hmm. heavy on the political end. And I know you mentioned Pink Floyd and, uh, you know, Animals for sure, but I mean, you know, I mean, The Wall. You know, I, the, sure. the Wall is, you know, is, is kind of a, 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 maybe a move into a completely different society that none no, of yeah. us are ready for, but, um, yeah. you know... I think yeah, one of the I think one of the strongest political songs in Pink Floyd's entire arsenal might be one of the most beautiful songs in their entire arsenal, and that's "Us and Them." Oh yeah, yes. "Us and Them" is like a that's a social commentary piece, but it's also a little more, you know, uh, forward. He cried from the rear. You know, yeah. the general cried from the rear forward, and the front ranks died. The generals mm. just sat and the lines on the map moved from side to side. Like the generals just see the men as lines moving and like, yeah, I got it. You know, and yeah. um, black yeah. and black, no one knows which is which and who is who, you know, with and without, you know, with the yeah. end. It's what the fighting's all about. And the very last phrase on there has always slayed me and Justin since oh, we yeah. were kids. But haven't you heard it's a battle of words, the poster bearer cried. For want of the price of tea and a slice, the old man died. Yeah. That's good um, stuff, man. Um, Roger um, Waters. Mike, talk about a political Mike. individual. Can we just talk about Roger Waters and his whole Israel-Palestine obsession? Gee, that I mean, man. that guy is a politically driven joker. Yes, he is. I mean, he is, yeah, he is about it. I was a little disappointed in Roger, not because of his views. I've always known what Roger's views are. I don't. Sure. And by the way, folks, it doesn't for us to say any of these people it doesn't mean we agree with them, yeah. like at all. It just means that this isn't an endorsement. No, <laughs> no. This is just we're just laying it out there. I don't yeah. mean I think any any one of these people is right. right. But but I was always a, a fan of Roger. Yeah. And his views on things were always at least I thought respectable not not because I agree with him but, but because it looked like the man took the time to formulate his own thought and didn't just do what the news told him to believe mm. and then I saw Roger yeah I mean I think they were continually trying to redefine what democracy and communism was they, they, <laughs> yeah. they, they weren't happy with yeah. the, you know, the I, I guess um, the, the, the notion that we bought off the shelf they, yeah, they, they they wanted to definitely have their own take on that, and Roger still does. He'll make you leave the room. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Roger, Roger's plum annoying with his stuff, but I, I will say this: I was I was severely disappointed the last time I saw him when he had become mainstream. I mean, I just I, I thought more of him than that. I was like, yeah. Roger, look, I don't have to agree with you on anything, but at least you're thinking for yourself. And then I went. You're not thinking for yourself anymore. Yeah. You're just doing what the mainstream everyone like you just you're mainstream now. Right. Like your views are officially not what they used to be. Even if you're taking the same view, you're just pop culturizing it now. And it's And then and that is a good point. And I and that's where I will I will personally just express an actual view here. No, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let's cook, baby. Stir it up. Not, not Stir really. It. Not oh, really. Okay. But just to say, I appreciate more, genuine, genuinely, the the artists that are informed by social consciousness and awareness, and it influences their work more so than the ones that are actually trying to like affect change. And this is why, because I think that it's rare for somebody to actually go down the road of wanting to affect change and then not be overly influenced by some sort of a mainstream opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think that it is increasingly difficult, especially the the more contemporary we get with these artists. It's increasingly difficult to do the work to actually develop some opinion with and truly be objective without being uh, subjected to like the opinions of media or just influenced by culture in so many ways. But I think that the more genuine, transparent offering that we get from the artists are the ones that are just informed and then they create something with it. And then you have the opportunity to do something with it as the consumer. Mm -hmm. 
Like, I don't really, you know, if I want, I'll go to the Associated Press if I want some information, right? But, like, I, if you want to present me with how you've been affected by politics or society and then and, and, and use it to create art or music and then let me do something with that, that's a better, I think that's a better exchange from musician to listener than, like, it trying to be some version of news. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's right. That's a good That's point. Right. The ones, you know, the, the, the ones that don't have to chant about it, the ones that don't have to grandstand and, and, you know, and give their, you know, whatever their political view, or anything, you right. know, to, to give their slant right. to the populace, to the proletariat mm -hmm. is, I mean, is, is just irresponsible. Mm-hmm. Elvis, you know? Elvis always said, why would anybody want to know my opinion? He said, I'm just an entertainer. That's right. <laughs> Versus, you know, and I think that's, a, that's obviously a very bold line we all drew with this topic tonight because everything we're talking about is exactly what you said, Justin. I mean, you know, these are, these, these are people who were out of the womb, you know, um, meant for change. Mm. They were, you know, and, and, and it just so happened that music was their avenue music was their medium to yeah. to exploit that yeah yeah and at that you know this has been an awesome topic um but i think to bring us to a close i think we we forgot about one of the one of the greatest ever oh, okay one of the the true pioneers in awareness and um uh, and that's that's mr toby keith Toby, Toby does a fine job. War, <laughs> Toby. Warrior poet. Warrior <laughs> poet. Toby Keith. <laughs> yeah. He Courtesy is. of the red, white, and blue. And that's a wrap. Folks. And that'll be all we have for tonight. Brought to you by... <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, folks. <laughs> Brandon Vibrock, my friend, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. BB. This is a pleasure. It's great to see thank you, you so both. much. Here he is, the man. And um, this is a blast. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank we'll you have to have you on again. Absolutely. Please. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. J-Mo? Yes, sir. It's been a pleasure, pal. Always. Folks, we'll see you next time. Enjoy your, the rest of your election period. And uh, <laughs> who knows? Maybe this election period will go like, uh, what was it, 2000, where it lasts another six months after we think. I hope so. I hope we can just. <laughs> vote. Yeah. Go and vote. Go vote. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not, if, not that it'll matter, but. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the cards may have already been drawn. I think the cards have already been drawn, but who knows? If we could extend 2020 a solid 24 more months, <laughs> I think not, we'd all love it. Please. You know? Please. Let's See, just go back to Dimple Chads and, and, you know, the world will be a better place. Yeah, that's right. I'll tell you what's going to come out. And I'm surprised it took this long to come out. In, in, a, in a room with these three gentlemen, it took this long for us to get around to the fact that we actually don't trust the government. Yeah, not really. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'm kidding. Government's great. Yes. Can't say that yes. out loud. We saying. love the IRS. Too. Oh, don't we? Yeah. They're right. good people. That's right. That's right. Honesty is, is key here. Wow. Right. Okay. Brandon, love you, pal. See you, bud. Peace, guys. We'll see you next time.
Curse it is cast. 